Welcome back to lesson 11 part 3. In this section we're going to talk about the relationship between wasn wahid and wasn saba'a, the relationship between wasn thneen and wasn khamsa, and the relationship between forms 3 and 6. Also wasn 6 and 7. So the relationship between all these different awzans and forms. This video was brought to you by the Critical Language Service. To learn more about our Arabic courses taught via telepresence and Skype to homeschool, high school, junior high school, and small colleges, visit our website at www.criticallanguageservice.com Wazin Sita and Wazin Saba The vocabulary in this chapter, chapter 11, introduces you to verbs from two new patterns you have not yet seen before, namely Wazin Sita and Wazin Saba. So, Wazin Sita, the pattern is Tafa'ala Yatafa'alu Attafa'ul an example, tabadala, yatabadalu, attabadul, exchange, to exchange something. And wasn sab'a, infa'ala, yanfa'ilu, al infi'al, example, in qata'a, yanqati'u, al inqita'a. A trick to make you uh, remember wasn sab'a, seven. In English, sab'a is the number seven. Is that seven and in fa'ala both have noon. In fa'ala, seven. In, in. Now we're going to look at the distinguishing characteristics of each. Of wasn sab'a, uh, sitta afwan, and wasn sab'a. Let's look at wasn sitta first. You have the stem begins with a, with a ta, tafa'ala. And like was in khamsa, all of its short vowels in madhi and mudara are fathas. So in madhi, for example, uh, you have tafa'ala, just put on the pattern. And the short vowels are going to be tafa'ala. And in mudara, yeah, the an, and all the short vowels are fathas. Yeah, the fa al. These are fathas as well. Example: We have yatahawar. So if you uh, replace fa ain and lam with hawara, we have tahawara yatahawar to converse. And just like was in thalatha, it has an alif in the pattern. See, tafa'ala and So the example that we gave before is yatahawar to converse. It has fathas for the yatahawar and the alif like form three. And the pattern, as you can see, it's yeah, and the ta the marking of the stem, and this resemblance between was in khamsa <coughs> uh, and all these and awzan is not accidental because. It means that it shares aspects of meaning and it doesn't just happen with khamsa and thalatha, it happens with other awzan. And for wazan sab'a, its unique characteristic is that it has noon in the uh, <coughs> pattern. In fa'ala, so this is the pattern for the past. And 
Look at me. And now let's look at the relationship between wazin wahid and wazin thnain. Fa'ala and fa'ala. The most basic aspect of the relationship between wazin wahid, fa'ala, and wazin thnain, fa'ala, is that it adds a causative meaning to wazin wahid. As in, to make or cause someone to do something. To perform X action. Where X represent the meaning of wazin wahid. We'll see how it works. Let's look at wazin wahid and thnain together. So, fa'ala. يفعل المفعلة whereas sorry فعل يفعل المفعلة and فعل يفعل التفعيل we talked earlier about how فعل and فعل look the same except for the شدة so if I want to give an example like عرف to know something and عرف to introduce someone so if I for example عرفت صديقي or عرفت الإجابة I know it for myself but for the second one, I would make someone know something. And this goes for a tarif. So knowledge, I know of something or someone. But a tarif B is to introduce someone to something or to someone. Does that make sense? Okay, so as you can see, between fa'ala and fa'ala, the shadda makes all the difference. It makes the meaning more intense. It makes the difference between knowing something and making someone know something between knowledge and introducing someone to someone else and now let's look at the causative relationship between verbs and how they are very common in spoken arabic in lesson seven you heard these verbs used in الحوار, the dialogue زعل uh, يزعل from فعل يفعل to become upset or be upset. And also, زعل and يزعل زعل and يزعل from فعل and يفعل. Do you see the similarities and differences between these two patterns? And so, they are, these are, this is form 1 and form 2, as you see from the shadda. Shadda makes it form 2. And in uh, spoken Arabic, unlike standard Arabic, it is uh, almost true for every verb that you can change it from form one to form two. Like za'al, uh, sorry, za'al, he was angry. Za'al, he makes someone else angry. And this is a characteristic of spoken Arabic. You can change any transitive, transitive, sorry, wasn't one verb can be changed into wasn't two in spoken Arabic. This is form one, transitive verb, that we can change into form two by adding a shadda, and the meaning will change accordingly. Egyptian dialect has this pattern, fa'il, ifa'il, and we will learn about it later. So, unlike fa'ala in standard Arabic, we have fa'il and ifa'il. We'll see an example of it. So, for Fa'al, you have the also common darasa. If we add the ris and for ifa'al, darasa with a pattern ifa'al. So it's not quite like the standard Arabic darasa, it's darris and idarris. Have same meaning like darasa, but it, this is specific for Egyptian dialect and that's the causative relationship between verbs in spoken Arabic so to drive the point home we're going to give some examples on how almost any transitive was in one verb can be made into was in two in spoken Arabic let's look at the examples so here we have to give someone something to eat or drink okay so it's Form two, sharrib or sharrab, and it comes from sharrib to drink. This is form one, and this is form two. All we had to do is change the shadda. Same for to make someone understand. We have fahim. 
with a shadda because shadda is what makes uh, what means that you are making someone understand something and this is form two that we came up with it from form one for him him this is form one okay and for to make someone die of boredom or laughter we have emote emote let me make that word for you emote and it comes from yamut or in standard in spoken arabic to be emut emut badhak so this is form two and this is form one as you learn more verbs the relationship will become clearer so hang in there the relationship between was in two and was in khamsa the relationship between was in two and was in five uh, was in thnein and was in khamsa is very close was in two is transitive in other words something that one does to someone or something else whereas was in five is reflexive or something one does to oneself so there's an action that is being performed to an outside to, uh, to an outside uh, party but the second uh, wasn't mean requires one another subject whereas wasn't uh, five the other subject can be oneself too example so you have fa'ala you fa'al at tafail arafa you araf at tarif b we saw this already it's to introduce someone to someone else make someone know someone so that's the two people for the action whereas was in khamsa is tafa'ala yatafa'al at tafa'al ta'arrafa yata'arraf at ta'arraf ala and was in uh, five you can get introduced to a concept by yourself whereas arrafa requires an introduction between two people another example is to remind someone of yourself for example whereas was in five is you remember something you recall something so if I was meeting seeing someone some of my friends and I had to remind them of myself I'd say the uh, binafsi I reminded him of myself whereas tadakkara I remembered the person myself more on the relationship between was in two and five here we have that sometimes was in two and five may be formed from a noun example the word suq the noun suq we have فعل يفعل التفعيل I can make market سوق into سوق يسوق التسويق Can you guess what the meaning becomes if you apply the word سوق to سوق to فعل and make it سوق It becomes a verb an action obviously and it means to market something Like in this picture you have a person who is marketing TV يسوق التلفاز in order to sell it لبيعه same goes for tafa'ala uh, yatafa'al tafa'al if i am to apply suq uh, to tafa'ala to be tasawwaqa yatasawwaq at tasawwuq so we said that verb uh, in was in five is when you the uh, action is reflexive the action you're doing yourself to yourself by yourself it's to take oneself to market to go shopping so يتسوق تتسوق is to go to the market shop whereas سوق is to do the actual marketing and they both come from the noun سوق and now the relationship between وزن واحد and وزن خمسة uh, sorry سبعة good news the relationship between وزن واحد and وزن خمسة <laughs> سبعة is very straightforward سبعة seven واحد سبعة the verb in qata'a from in fa'ala is related to the verb qata'a fa'ala to cut something.
Can you guess how? قطع إن قطع. So here we have فعل يفعل المفعل قطع يقطع القطع إن فعل إن قطع الانفعال إن قطع. Can you guess what is the relationship between these two? It is the difference between to cut and to be cut. Yes, it's the difference between active and passive. So, one and seven. فعل is the uh, active form, whereas in فعل is the passive form. Notice that only a minor minority of was in واحد verbs, was in one verbs, uh, have meanings that can be made passive. So, was in سبعة is rare because of that. The relationship between forms ثلاثة and ستة. Three and five. Note that the meaning of the وزن ستة verb in this chapter, تبادلة, we saw earlier, is an excellent example of the reciprocal meaning that form ستة verb often have with form three verbs. So, بادلة and تبادلة are, uh, have the same meaning of reciprocal uh, exchange or going. But we will return to the relationship between form three and Six later when you know more verbs. For now, tabadala is a good example of wasn uh, sitta and how it relates to wasn thiratha. If you found this video helpful, please let us know by either leaving us feedback or giving us a like. Your feedback will help us to make better videos in the future.